everybody. Welcome to today's edition of the Gamut Network. I have an incredibly accomplished woman on the show today that you may recognize because she has certainly been in the public eye. Raji, welcome to the show. It's so wonderful to have you and I love seeing you. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad to be here with you. Well, I mean, virtually. <laughs> you know, but this is, I'm, I'm at least grateful that we have this. Can you share with our audience um, about your story, uh, your disability, what life has been like to lead you to where you are today? Absolutely, yes. So um, I was born in India. I was adopted and I um, had, you know, contracted polio in India. And fortunately, I was adopted by an amazing and wonderful loving family um, that I'm incredibly blessed to be a part of. And I, I just know that, you know, so many people, I, I don't, I don't think they have the kind of a relationship they do with their parents and their family. And I could be, uh, I couldn't be more grateful that I have that. And it's such a blessing. So, um, you know, I think that um, so much of who we are and who we become is um, from our upbringing. And so my parents, you know, they poured so much love and care into me. And um, I carried that with me throughout my life. But uh, obviously, as a child, um, before I was adopted, because I was adopted, um, I had, I literally had, I came to the United States, uh, uh, like in, on July 4th, 1990, and I was six years old. So, um Anyway, so it's funny because, you know, it's like, um, it's like, I, it, it's America's Independence Day, but in a lot of ways, it was my own Independence Day. So. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, um, I, it's, a, it's a big day for me and um, a very special day. So I think, you know, I always kind of, even as a child, I, I had a spark in me and that really has carried me through my whole life. And um, even the nun who, um, she actually, um, was the head nun that would go to overcrowded orphanages and, you know, pick out children that she saw something in. And so she told my parents that she was like, you know, when I saw Raji, she had this like spark inside of her and this sparkle in her eyes. And she was like, I knew she was going to do big things. <laughs> so, oh, oh my goodness. Okay. So you're six years old. Uh -huh. Um, when, when you know, the, the nun saw the spark physically from having polio, what, what, what was happening? What, what were the, um, issues? Um, yeah. So for me personally, I mean, polio affects people differently. Mm -hmm. So for me, it, um, affected, but it affected my legs. So, um, predominantly my right leg, I do have some muscle in my left leg. Um, so it's, uh, attacks your nerves and your muscles. And so, um, for me, I just, you know, my muscles completely atrophied. And so, um, as I got older and I had surgeries, um, I was, uh, basically also my, my tendons, um, were also, um, extremely tight. And so my legs were, um, you know, just not, they weren't straight. And so I had to go through various um, I went through like a major surgery when I first came to the to the United States, and so my parents um, immediately made sure I got medical care. And um, you know, I'm I'm very fortunate. I was in the hospital for a little bit, and um, they I was in contraction that was incredibly painful. I don't know, you know, how many people have to go through that kind of pain, but I had to be turned um, every you know few hours or whatever just to um, make sure that. And it was it was I I mean I remember. It, to a degree, but you know, it was so long ago that it just was, I mean, it's like, oh yeah, I, I had surgery and I've had, you know, a couple surgeries since. And so, um, yeah, so I think that, you know, medical, um, attention and medical care was, uh, very helpful in that because I, it allowed me to, um, to, uh, you know, have the independence to walk with, um, my braces and my crutches. So I do wear, um, braces on my leg when I'm out and about in my home. I fortunately have enough strength that I don't wear them in the house. But um, yeah, so I think, you know, and for as a child, then growing up with that, um, I think so much of why I didn't feel like I was bullied or anything like that, because I hear so many stories from when I've even gotten a few on the show. 
<laughs> which is heartbreaking. Yeah. It just will never be yeah. anything but heartbreaking. Yeah. And so, you know, even after um, I, I got to a level, um, you, you know, where I felt uh, like I was making a difference and I had people through my social media platform or when I went and spoke um, that came up to me and told, and it was just heartbreaking to hear these stories of these children that were being bullied because honestly, like I am very fortunate. I didn't have to really experience that. I mean, a little bit of teasing here and there, but like, you know, I think also I just have a very tough skin. Um, but I, you know, went through that awkward phase of just not feeling like I fit in but I think it's even more magnified when you're um, a person with a disability because it's like, okay, nobody else looks like me and how do I fit in and how do I do these things? And I was really fortunate that, you know, my uh, school was very um, inclusive and, you know, the, the, my, like, for instance, my PE teacher, you know, he figured out ways that he could really include me in those activities. And so mm -hmm. I never felt left out in that sense. Um, and, uh, but I think, you know, for me, it really hit me, um, as I became a teenager and then after that, and that's because, you know, so much of society really puts an emphasis on your looks and, you know, it's just, that's just the way it is. And so, you know, like I was flipping through magazines and watching TV and not being able to relate and being like, are there not people with disabilities? Oh, um, being home after school in high school one day and watching Oprah <laughs> and she's definitely one of my inspirations. I mean, and, she generally uh, is the, the answer. For, to for, all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, it's like you're feeling down, watch Oprah. Watch yeah. Oprah. <laughs> solve the problem in one episode. Yeah. Oprah's perfect. Problems. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. So then, you know, I remember thinking to myself, like, I didn't see my I didn't see myself out there and I didn't feel seen and represented and so I remember saying to myself I'm gonna make a difference mm. and um, yeah I truly sparkle. I think that's the sparkle that that the nun saw in you in that you know during that time that's so difficult teenage years with with nothing no issues teenage years can be challenging but put the layer of disability on top of that and it's even yeah. more challenging. And you could have definitely gone, you know, one of two ways. You could have gone the way that I know that you went that we're gonna share of having mm -hmm. that sparkle and wanting to make a difference. Um, mm -hmm. Or you could have gone the other way and say, why me, poor me? Uh, you know, I don't and, Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and- I've definitely been there before. Oh, well, that's a present. I'm still there, I, I still have, moments of you know why my son why our family uh you know that and i think that is completely uh the course of life and natural but you picked yourself up even from those moments uh, right. and and forged on do you think that uh that came from you internally from the amazing support that you had from your family or a combination of both I mean, it's, it was definitely a combination of both, but I think looking back, I think so much of it was uh, myself internally and digging deep because you can have all the support out there, but until you really go inward and find that strength and find whatever it is inside of you that makes you keep going every single day, despite whatever circumstance you're in. I love that. And actually one of our guests said the most unbelievable quote, that if you cannot go outside, go inside. Yeah, I love that. Isn't that beautiful? Doesn't that just say it all? Yep. So yep. magnificent, but it's exactly you know what you're talking about, that you, you found it inside. And that is critically important to forging through some, I'm sure, very challenging time emotionally and physically. Yes, uh, absolutely. For you. So now yep. you've gotten through high school, um, and tell me about it. Did you go to college? Tell me about from that point on, because I want to get to certainly the amazing um, trailblazing um, <laughs> efforts that you have been a part of. Yeah. So I made a decision um, that I was going to, um, I was going to uh, create visibility, 
safety for disability for, for, for people with disabilities in the media that so I, I use the hashtag a lot of times in my post disability in media and um, I told myself that I said I was gonna create um, you know that visibility and um, I didn't know how I started out as an art major in college but then after my first semester I, I, I switched to broadcast journalism and I went with that and I said to myself because um, I actually I minored in broadcast journalism and majored in art and then I switched it around and um, because I realized that that was where I was going to make that difference and so my degree is in broadcast journalism and you know I didn't necessarily go the route of being a reporter but I knew that those um, those um, skills that I learned obviously carried me through and still has um, and you know I, I dealt with a ton of rejection and I think that's I think that's the part that is probably the most painful um, in for anybody, but then even more so for a person with a disability because we have to try even harder to kind of prove ourselves and prove that like, no, I'm capable of this, I can do this. And it's also like a teaching uh, experience too because there's so many, um, you know, stereotypes or uh, misconceptions about people with disabilities. And a lot of times, you know, I think, it really comes down to uh, people being willing to learn and to educate and, and the person who has a disability educating other people on their capabilities and you know how they go about life and even for me on sets doing video shoots in commercials that kind of stuff or being on set on the production side of things you know all those things like I had to be the person that educated other people on my capabilities and what I could do. And, you know, um, I remember going to an audition and it was an audition where um, the, the I, I, don't know, I think it was a director, um, he was in the audition and he asked me like, what, what, uh, and I'm, I'm glad he asked me this actually because people don't know unless they ask. And so I think so many times there's a stigma like, oh, you can't, um, ask because that's inappropriate. No, I'd rather you ask, and I think most people know. feel that. Way and so, to and ask instead of staring. Ask because right. you're curious. Yes. Ask because now you will be educated for the next time that you deal with somebody. So I'm, I'm curious what he asked you. Exactly. Yeah. So basically, he asked like, what was my, yeah. So he asked what was my limitations on my mobility of, of my movement because this particular scene, um, there was the idea was like I think that you needed to kind of um, not necessarily like run but kind of like take a you know take a few steps towards um, this act that was going on it was kind of like a circus scene or something like that and so I said well I can't run but I can you know take you know a few and I think this was their them wondering like what I can how much I can move with my crutches versus not and I can take a few steps without them um but it's you know and again I'm glad he asked me that because he Absolutely. otherwise he would have known right and so um I ended up getting landing the principal role in that commercial and you know so it's just I think so much of what you get in life is what you put out there and um, you know, all my accomplishments, it's just, it's, it's an energy field too, you know, like you can't be afraid to just, um, go after your goals and dreams and to ask. And I mean, even how I connected with you years ago, you know? And so I was like, oh my gosh, like, and, and that wasn't an accident coming across your organization. Cause for me personally, I was like, I was annoyed. I was like, why isn't there people with disabilities that are in magazines, on runway shows, you know, in movies. And I mean, there was a little bit, but not to the extent that it, it is now. And, um, and I think, you know, there, I just hate that there's this, there is this like negative stigma that like, that people with disabilities are unattractive or um, are like not cognitive, cognitively functional or, you know, it's like, no, we're the same as everybody else. We just have limitations on, you know, how we, how we're mobile or how we, whatever it is, like whether you're communicating or whatever the disability is, but you know, it's like, let the person tell you what they're capable of and educate you. Um, and there's, there is, it's just like so many unnecessary stigmas that could just be avoidable if people just were, willing to be more aware and and you Absolutely. know and 
you you hit on so many important themes um, of, of what you just said that I want to make sure that we just kind of go back and reiterate because they're so critically important and truly the reason why we have this show um, mm -hmm. to really highlight that people with disabilities are people. People yeah. their disability. You are a okay. gorgeous, vi vivacious young woman who has accomplished a lot and still has a lot more to accomplish. So uh, one thing I want to kind of pivot to, and I think this is going to be very important to people watching, certainly young girls that are mm -hmm. not teenagers yet and are about to go on that journey, yeah. that they can see somebody like you in the public eye, um, you know, in what you're going to tell us about, that do you think that that would have changed your perception um, if seeing people with disabilities in our mainstream media back when you were younger? Do you, I can only imagine how that would have translated to you, your younger self, and to others that are currently young. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Elaborate a little bit more on that because I think people don't, really understand the profound effect that it has. I mean, you know, me on a completely ridiculous level, but when I was younger, you know, uh, there was very few redheaded, curly, freckly faced people that were, you know, was blonde hair, blue eye, yeah. feathered hair. That was beauty in the yeah. world. So I, I think I can only imagine what it would be like, you know, to, to have a, physical difference and not seeing anybody that looked like you. Right. Yeah. So I, yeah, I mean, growing up, if I had seen somebody that looked like me, it would have made a huge difference. And I, again, it's like, everybody has a story. Everybody is a human being. We all come from the same place and, but we all have such beautiful um, experiences and life stories to tell. And so I think that, um, you know, had I seen myself or not myself, but somebody that looked like me in magazines or TV or, you know, runway or whatever, um, it would have definitely been different because I could have, I would have been like, oh my gosh, like I can be this person or I can be whatever it is. It doesn't have to be a model or actor, or, you know, anything like that, but it would have put something inside me that I think would have been like, oh my gosh. Yeah, you know, a doctor or a teacher or a nurse or whatever, you know, like a scientist, or whatever, you know. And so um, I would say that, you know, I think that having having the the ability now to have that impact on young girls and for and to be that role model um, has really been so incredibly um, rewarding for me because I think that, you know, if I had had those role models when I was young, it would have, it would have cut down on my insecurities. It would have cut down on my like internal anxiety, however, that manifested. Um, you know, I, and I, I mean, I think the biggest thing is self-esteem and confidence, right? So like for me personally, I had to work at building You know, and I, you know, my friends all joke with me. They're like, God, you have like perfect teeth and perfect hair and perfect skin and whatever, you know? And so, and you know, and I, by the way, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, so, you know, but it's, um, or, you know, long eyelashes, whatever it is. So it's just like, it, it's, it's, um, one of those things that, yeah, there's, um, a level of ourselves that, you know, that is that like where physical is or what you see on the outside is is very surface level mm -hmm. but then it's like you know when you really dig deep and get to know somebody and get to know their story and get to know their heart and like that is that exudes inside of you if granted like not everyone is blessed i guess with you know amazing hair and teeth or what a smile or whatever you know but like find whatever it is that internally, and I, I say this all the time to people, I'm like, you know, if that's like, you're an amazing cook, or, you know, you're great at doing cartwheels, whatever it is, like, you know, find that, and then use that, and it's, it's your gift, 
And so for me, I think it's interesting because over the years, I, I think um, whether you realize it or not, the universe is constantly telling you what your gift is. And so I truly believe uh, as a young child, you know, that spark, it came out in my smile. Um, in the way that I communicated, in the way that I showed love and kindness. Um, And so, you know, those are all things that are huge and like so important to know about yourself and to find that because how you treat yourself is incredibly important and what you think of yourself is what really matters because deep down inside, whatever that is that you internalize and you feel about yourself is how other people are gonna perceive you. So I think that so much of my confidence and how I present myself in the world um, and how other people see me, I mean, I get told all the time, you know, like people are like, oh my gosh, you're so strong, you're so beautiful, Um, you know, you just exude confidence. And it's like, well, yeah, yeah, because I worked at that for myself. And Um, so can you, right, to the other person. You exactly. have that. You have that possibility as well, and I, I think that it is really um, something that needs to be discussed more. That everybody has that power, and that is certainly something that you are absolutely exuding. But you are also exuding it publicly um, and in our mainstream media. So, can you share with us some of the unbelievable accomplishments that? that you have been a part of, campaigns that you've been in. I really want to show people that not only do you believe it internally, but you're sharing it externally. Yeah, so I think um, it does start internally with what you truly believe in. And if you believe um, that you are capable of incredibly amazing things, it's gonna happen for you. And you have to spend your day doing whatever it is to really believe that internally, whether that's, um, you know, visualizing it, meditating on it, just thinking about it in a positive way constantly. Like it was, I knew that I was meant to uh, make a difference in media um, because I, it was a constant thought in my head constantly. Like, and that's the thing what I was, I think I was trying to get at earlier, like whatever it is that is always like a, a constant thought or a constant nagging in your heart or in your mind, um, that is what you're meant to do. And so for me, I, you know, went into school or went to college for broadcast journalism. I graduated. I got tons of rejections, like, no, 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 no. It was constant. No, I went for interviews. I interviewed at like, you know, TV stations, and uh, uh, advertising companies and, you know, all the, and, and now I look back and obviously, and even during that time, I remember even my mom saying like, well, um, it's, a, uh, you know, it's just, it, how she always she had such a way a beautiful way to word it and it was something like you know um like uh, it's not a rejection it's a redirection and oh, or something like that yes and so i and i you know i think that I, the one thing that i will tell people is that i think that being rejected is it's it's painful you know and if you can just get over that somehow and tell yourself you're better or you're or you're you're gonna you're, you know the world is um, gonna bless you with something that that is in alignment and that is even better for you. Um, then it's gonna happen because that's the thing is I wasn't meant to you know be at a TV station reporting about I don't know how much corn the grew or something you know what I mean like and so um, so yeah so then I took all of that and you know I ended up. Um, uh, and again, I really believe everything happens for a reason. So my um, senior year, I was interning at NBC and I was in charge of opening all the press kits for, um, you know, whatever companies that would send them. And one of the companies was American Eagle and they were announcing the launch of their sister brand, Airy. And I was like, no way, this is the same as my last name. How cool. I want to be a model. <laughs> for this. And, and it was you know, and it was crazy. And that was, you know, my senior year of college that that happened. And it just was a constant thing. I think Victoria's Secret was the only um, int- really like mainstream intimate apparel line. And then obviously, um, Aerie came came through. And I loved, you know, the way that Aerie has branded themselves in, in 
you know, not airbrushing their models and just celebrating the true, real, authentic person that um, we all are. And so that brand obviously really resonated with me and who I was. And so, when, so yeah, so, um, you know, I, I loved that Aerie was a brand that I really resonated with. And I was like, I really want to model for them. And so I, and I did, I actually like reached out to corporate and I was like, how do I become a model? And they're like, well, you have to have an agent. And so <laughs> I was like, great. And so actually, I think at the time, I did have an agent and I did tell my agent, like, I want to model for this company. And it wasn't because of that, that that happened. It was again, just me putting it out there mm -hmm. and the universe, um, you know, coming back and being like, you, this has been on your mind. You're going to make a huge impact and difference, but it all had to be with, it all had to do with timing as well. Right. Cause I had to get to a point where I was really confident in my skin and who I was. And in order for me to, to be on a billboard in Times Square for this brand. And so um, I remember even, so how that came about is they, you know, posted a um, casting call and I was actually about to like head out for a friend's birthday party. And it was the last day that they were um, submitting or accepting submissions for this casting call. So I put together a video really quick. I, I sent it in and like two weeks later, I get an email and it was like, congratulations, you know, you've been selected for the Airy Bra campaign. And so I was like, I read the email like 10 times. So I was like, wait, is this for real? <laughs> and, um, and keep in mind, like, um, this was one of, this was like the, one of the, I mean, that wasn't like the most first major thing that I had done because I had already like been in a national commercial. I had done other things, you know, and projects and whatever. So it wasn't like, Oh my God, this is like, you know, the, the first thing. So, um, but for me, I knew that that was a huge accomplishment because I finally got to, um, a point where I think, especially for females, like, uh, first of all, females in general, whether you have a disability or not, you want to, you want to be confident in your skin and you want to feel beautiful and you want to feel sexy. And so I think that this was, um, one of those things where I was like, oh my gosh, like. I am good enough. I am, you know, um, just as beautiful as Giselle or whatever, you know? <laughs> and so, um, I, so when I went and I was accepted and I did that campaign, I knew that that was a huge turning point for me because I was, um, again, I was, you know, uh, the visibility was there. I was, you know, obviously breaking the glass ceiling and showing that people, um, you know, what, like I have scars on my legs. I have, you know, from my surgeries mm -hmm. and just, you know, it's just one of those things where it's like, regardless of what you look like physically, you're still capable of incredible things and accomplishing incredible, incredible things. And at the end of the day, you, you are worthy and you have a story and you're powerful and nobody's gonna, um, know you better than yourself. And so you have to be the one to tell your story and to uh, have other people see it through, you know, your, your eyes and your smile and how you experience life. And that's what I think makes our world so beautiful because we all have different life experiences and we all experience it through our own, you know, pain and struggle and hardships. And, you know, it's just, I mean, and our triumphs too, right? I mean, I think that that's what's so beautiful about all this is that, you know, when all that happened, I had a lot of, you know, support and love from, you know, my friends, my family and strangers. And then I think the impact that made, I had people reaching out being like, thank you so much for being a role model and doing this because now my daughter or my son can see somebody that looks like them and they feel seen and heard. Absolutely. And what was it like, even just for you personally? Did you have that moment of being in Times Square and looking up at the billboard? Yeah, it was really surreal. It was Holy incredible. cow. That's me up on, an, on a billboard in Times Square. Did you yeah. have that holy cow moment? I did. No, for sure. I just, it, yeah. I mean, that like, you know, I, I think I, I remember getting goosebumps and just like, I got teary eyed and I just was like, I mean, obviously like it just, I did, I got a huge smile on face and just I felt like I had finally made it I had finally accomplished what I was 
out there to do. And I know I'm going to accomplish so much more, but for me, having that, um, that thought as a teenager of not seeing myself represented when I was flipping through, you know, 17 magazine or whatever, um, Cosmo. Um, and so, you know, to finally have gotten to that point so many years later and to see myself and know that I'm making a difference and creating visibility in the media, um, for people with disabilities and people, women of color. Um, you know, so it just, it, it was huge. It was, and it, it just like, I don't, I, it's really like, you can't really explain that moment because it's just such a beautiful moment inside my heart and who I am and just a sense of accomplishment. And, and like I said, I think the biggest thing was I said to myself, even when I went in through into this and, and I was like, no matter if I make a difference in one person's life or many people's life, I've accomplished a life goal. Absolutely. So now you may have were a part of something enormous. What yeah. are you working on now? So, um, well, I'm currently, um, a, I work for uh, Toyota on the auto show circuit. Um, but I also, so I'm representing Toyota. Um, but I also am, um, you know, just working on my own stuff. I am still, you know, agency represented. I still am doing auditions. I mean, it's a little tough right now because of, of course, you know, yeah. our but situation. But I, back in action before you know it. Yes. So, um, but also like, you know, I think for myself personally, I'm working on, you know, creating more content. I realize that um, people need to hear uh, my story and just how I go about, you know, each and every day. And so for me, I'm just trying to like figure out and, you know, life is a constant journey and I don't have all the answers and you don't either, but it's just kind of like, you know, you just flow with it and you just, um, and you know, a lot of times, um, you put that energy out there and opportunities just happen. And, you know, I think that like the universe will give you what, at, at, at what point you meet the universe, you know what I mean? So if you're not ready to take that leap of faith, if you're not, you know, whether that's, um, I don't know, in your work, in relationships, in your whatever, you know, anything. And so, um, yeah, so it's just like, you know, you have to really go inward and, and just find whatever it is that drives you and, and you and just and use that use that as your fuel to um you know accomplish whatever it is that you want in your life because if you had asked me you know back then oh or if you had told me back then like when i was a teenager oh yeah you are gonna be a big major model and on a billboard in times square i would have been like yeah right <laughs> you know <laughs> And so, um, so to, to do that, and then also, you know, it's, it's weird to sometimes like see myself in a commercial on TV or on a YouTube, you know, commercial or Hulu or whatever, you know, like it's, it's still surreal to me sometimes when that happens and, or a print thing or, you know, whatever it is. Um, and you know, I've worked from everything from like small little projects. I even have friends, my cousin, for instance, she was doing like a, 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 ongoing educational tool learning thing and she was like oh my god i'm watching this thing and boom there you appear and oh i love it yeah. oh, cool. so like, you know, like industrial videos and then i had another friend she works for a grocery store and they had to do some internal training and she was like a, a girl i went to college with and she was like yeah we're watching this video and then boom you appeared and then like um i had one other instance where my friend he um is in pharmaceuticals and same thing i he was um, browsing online on a website and then he was like um is this is you right and he like screenshot it and sent it to me and I was like oh yeah and I hadn't even seen it a lot yeah. of times you know these small little well, they're not necessarily small but like you know these projects uh sometimes as the talent you don't always see how how they're exactly. out exactly. there but, oh but my god I love it now I am I'm particularly enjoying um how much you believe in in the universe and you know like you put out what you get back because that leads in perfectly to the final question that I like to ask all of our guests and that's the power of a vision board and putting out there uh, whether it's it's actually a vision board or it's in your head but really kind of putting out to the universe what you 
wish or hope or will make happen in your lifetime, um, what would that be for you? I know that you've already accomplished so much, but would it be somebody that you want to meet or work with or something that you still are, are is kind of like your end all be all goal? What would that be? So I've thought about this, obviously, and I mean, I would love to work with Oprah. <laughs> you do. She's um, on my vision board, so we'll, we'll do it together. Okay, we'll do it together. Yeah, so, yeah, perfect. Um, yeah, she's a huge inspiration to me, um, and then I would love to, um, I would love to, you know, eventually write a book, and um, also, I think another goal would be to, um, I think it would be super cool to, you know, either produce or be in a movie or both. Um, I think that would, a lot of people have said that my uh, life is like the movie Lion and it is in a lot of ways. And it's funny because when I was 10 years old, I remember telling my dad's coworker, I'm going to um, like create a movie based loosely based on my life. And then, um, so I do believe that's going to happen at some point um, because I, and over and over all throughout my years, I've been told by so many people, Oh my gosh, you should, you know, your life is a movie, you need to cre create this movie or write a book. And so those are two things that are, you know, down the road. Um, I would love for both of those things to happen. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think, like I said, I think, you know, I just want to be able to impact others and make a difference in others' lives. And I know I've already done that. And that, like I said, has just been so rewarding. And if I can continue to do that and inspire people, um, and really, I mean, it really is what I've learned is it's, it's, a, it's, it's how you, how you view life. So that's not, that's one thing, like, you know, you have to have a positive outlook on life. And I always have because, you know, we've all gone through struggles in our lives. And that's how I think as a human race, we all relate is because we've all felt pain, we've all felt struggles and um, or dealt with struggles. And so um, all we can do is to share our story and hope that that is going to help another human relieve the pain and suffering of another human being. Well, you certainly did that um, by being on this show. And we are so incredibly grateful. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for your pearls of wisdom. If people want to get in touch with you or learn more about your story, what's the best way to tell them to connect with you? Um, they can connect with me on Instagram. So my handle is just at Raji Airy, my first and last name. Um, and then I, you know, people can feel free to message me on there. I do post, um, you know, content and stuff that I'm working on, uh, you know, whenever I feel inspired to do so. So Perfect. Well, this was a an incredibly insightful conversation. Thank you so much for being a part of the Gamut Network. I am so grateful and it was so wonderful to see you of course i'm so grateful to be on your show and share a bit of my story and hope it inspires other people it absolutely will no doubt about that if you would like to be on the show please email us at talent at gametmanagement.com and tell us why you'd be a great guest please don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel at the gamut network and our social channels at gamut management Raji, thank you again so much. It was just an, a, an absolute joy. Thank you. I appreciate it. You, you have a great day. And uh, yes. I don't know if it's sunny by you, but it's sunny here. So I'm going to go Good. for a walk. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.